this priest just invalidated my confession. If you've ever been through this experience and you want to know what to do in this situation, stick around to find out. Hey, everybody, welcome back to Reason and Theology. Your host, Michael Lofton. I want to talk about a situation that I think, um, you know, a fair amount of people experience. And whenever they experience it, they're probably going to get really worried and don't know what to do. Well, I am going to uh, give you some advice on some things that I've learned on what to do in these situations, especially uh, in the context of maybe if you uh, go to confession and the priest invalidates the confession. I'll explain how that may happen. Um, but I'm not going to give you you know, names, dates, places on when this happened. I'm not calling any individual out for this. That's not the, the point of the show. The point is for us to learn um, how to handle these situations if it ever happens to us. So I was recently, again, not saying where or when or by whom, I was recently at confession and a Latin rite priest um, invalidated my co confession. And here's here's how it happened. Um he now I've been to him before and he has said the words of absolution correct uh, correctly before but on this occasion I could tell it's like he forgot um what the words of absolution were in the um prayer that's supposed to be used for the rite of penance in the Roman rite which is um, I'll read it to you here. God, the Father of mercies, through the death and resurrection of his Son, has reconciled the world to himself and sent the Holy Spirit among us for the forgiveness of sins. Through the ministry of the church, may God give you pardon and peace, and I absolve you from your sins in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. All right. That's the, um, that is the form of the sacrament that is currently in use for most Roman Rite uh, confessions, unless it's being done in the extraordinary form. Um, and, and note, I'm talking about the Roman Rite. It, it is done a little differently in some of the Eastern churches. So I am not talking about validity or the form in other Catholic churches. I'm only talking about in the Roman Rite. So keep, keep that in mind here. All right. Well, anyways, so I could tell he forgot the, um, the actual rite and the words of the rite. Maybe it wasn't in the confession and he hasn't memorized them. I know that he's from a different country, so English is not his primary language. And so maybe he has it memorized in his own language, but not in English. I don't know. <laughs> but it seemed like he was fumbling over his words. And then I could tell he just started to make up a prayer, which as far as made up prayers go, it was fine. <laughs> the problem is it completely lacks uh validity because it misses the essential part which we'll look at here in a moment what is absolutely essential for the confession it was missing the essential part and he said jesus forgives you of your sins in the name of the father son and the holy spirit i that's I, I appreciate that that's wonderful i am very grateful jesus forgives me of my sins but that is not how to validly absolve people of their sins all right well anyways I'm I'm the kind of guy who I'm not going to sit there and tell a priest how to do his job and explain to him the very basics of how to be a priest and how to give absolution. I could, but I just kind of feel like I, I shouldn't have to. I feel like that's more something that one superior should tell them. I really just kind of feel like if I have to really have a conversation with a priest about here's the very bare minimum on, on how to do your job kind of conversation, if, if I have to go that route, I, you know, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't feel like I'm going to do that, so, <laughs> but that's me. That's me. There's plenty of people out there who are going to be like, uh, well, father, you, you just completely, uh, omitted the, uh, <laughs> The, the 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 words of absolution can you say that you know some people will do that and, and that's fine it's perfectly fine but i'm just the kind of guy that it's like i'm not going to explain to a priest how to do the very basics in the very bare minimum i'm just i'm not going to have that conversation um at best you know what what i'll probably do is just talk to their superior and have them explain it to them because it just seems odd that a layman had has to explain that to a priest just seems odd to me but again 
If you're the kind that would do that, go for it. Just do it. Do it charitably. <laughs> now, anyways. All right. So let's get back to it. That was kind of my my experience. And this isn't the first time I've experienced that, by the way. Uh, that might be the second time I've experienced that um, in, in all these years of being Catholic, which I guess is a good thing. I mean, I don't think anyone should ever have to experience that, but. I guess with, you know, having been to many confessions before um, for only maybe two instances for the priest to not say the words of absolution, I guess is a pretty good track record. <laughs> but I, I don't think that there should ever be a fail here anyway. So there's there's that as well. But anyways. <laughs> oh, and yeah, I, I, I th this is true, Father Corey. Uh, is in the chat mentioning the new translation, uh, which is now um, sent forth the, uh, the Holy Spirit among us for the forgiveness. Um, it's now poured out the Holy Spirit for the forgiveness and so and so on. So that that part has been updated, updated, but but that doesn't touch on the validity issue necessarily. But that is part of the form, but it doesn't touch on the validity part. Um, which we'll look at here in a moment, what touches on the validity part of the form. Um, so like, what's the bare minimum? We'll look at that here in just a second. Oh, and he also says in uh, give us now grant. So yeah, it's it's been updated a little bit. Um, but point is, he just completely made something up. It, it wasn't even in the ballpark, you know, and God bless him. I mean, I'm sure he was doing his best and he's just like, I don't know. So let me just do my best to make up a prayer here god bless him i'm sure he tried but yeah epic fail um so all right what exactly is essential to the right well there are some very very rare exceptions where it can be done generally general confessions but in in these circumstances it needs to be done individually the confession has to be integral and there has to be uh, absolution provided. So individual, that is just very basic, right? I mean, you individually confess your sin. That's pretty straightforward. Integral is a little bit more complex. That's where canonists are going to effectively say that if you're like deliberately and intentionally withholding a known grave sin, that's not an integral confession. So if you like, you know, you performed th this grave sin and you also know you, you did, you committed this one, but it's like you only mention one and deliberately, not, not that you forgot, but you deliberately fail to mention this one, maybe out of embarrassment or something. They'll generally argue, okay, that's not integral. And you, and it has to be integral um, per canon law it has to be individual integral. And also there has to be absolution. So, all known grave sins have to be confessed. Like, again, that's different than I forgot. And then you remember it after you leave the confessional. That's different. We're talking about somebody who's in the confessional. They know. And they're like, no, I'm going to deliberately not mention this, which is grave matter. It's a very serious issue. I'm deliberately not going to mention it for X reason. You didn't necessarily give a good confession at that point. Um, but let's say the the penitent individually confesses, gives a good confession. It's all integral. Um, okay, what do you do if there isn't uh, absolution provided um, or some kind of faulty version of absolution is provided? Well, let, let's see, first of all, what is actually essential. Um Aside from the, the updates, as we, as we noted there from Father, let me share my screen and show you the essential part according to the 1974 Rite of Penance. The essential part is this. Like, the bare minimum for absolution to occur. The priest says, I absolve you from your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. This other stuff, yeah... The church does say, here's what you're supposed to say in this form. But if for some reason they mess it up, at the very least, they need to say this part. Otherwise, the sacrament has not been celebrated. Um, 
okay. And in, in, in my case, he said, Jesus forgives you of your sins. He didn't say anything like I absolve you of your sins. Okay. So very technically that's an invalid confession. Now, what happens if you experience that? First of all, let me tell you from experience. Number one, relax, relax. God is not bound to the sacraments. If you die, God is not going to say, well, you know what? That priest over there, he didn't give you the right words of absolution. You're toast. <laughs> that's just like, if, if that's really who God is, believe me, you can never please him anyway. You would never be able to please him, no matter how many times you go to confession. If that is the kind of God we serve, you would never please him. He'll ding you on something else. Fortunately, that's not the God we serve. The God we serve is merciful. And God is not bound to the sacraments. We're bound to the sacraments, but God isn't. So we do everything that we can to present ourselves to the church and receive the sacraments. But if they fail us, the ministers fail us, that's not on us. Now, I'm going to add a caveat to that here in a moment. But what I'm saying is, just relax. You're you're not you're not going to hell. God's not going to say you're done. You're toast. You didn't say the right words. Now, I will say, do your best to go to a valid confession. That's that's one option. So, you know, next time um, when you're able to go to a priest, go to another priest, and confess the sins and receive absolution um but it's like if, if if you don't make it there and you were to die do, do you or do you think god's gonna condemn you over the failure of somebody else no that, that's not the god that we serve fortunately um so that being said you could again seek out a different priest go and confess those same sins just reconfess in this instance you normally never reconfess especially for the scrupulous um but but in the case of an invalid confession yeah you would go and reconfess just find a different priest and confess to them another option is you could right then and there tell the priest hey could you say the words of absolution you could do that, right? And, you know, it's very likely that they will. Unless the priest is intentionally trying to alter uh, the sacrament and the form of the sacrament, which is a very severe problem at that point, because there are canonical penalties for uh, simulating a sacrament, which is effectively what they're doing at that point. So... I would, at that point, if they refuse to do it, certainly speak to their superior. Um, but if you're like me and you're like, look, I'm not going to tell the priest the very basics on how to do his job. I shouldn't have to do that. Go to a different priest, receive the sacrament of confession through them. And yeah, maybe mention it to their superior so that they get everybody on board with using the right. Uh, words of absolution. Um, now, <clears throat> I would certainly, certainly recommend that one doesn't do any of this out of anger. Um, you know, do so out of charity. If if you are going to correct the priest then and there in the confessional, do so very kindly and say, hey, Father, um, can you please say the words of absolution that's essential for the sacrament? Just do it in a very nice way. Don't just start ridiculing him. How do you completely and epically fail at the very bare minimums of this? Don't just start making fun of the priest and being rude and ridiculous to him and stuff like that. That's that's just not the right way to handle things. Although I do honestly wonder. <laughs> I, I might not say it to the priest, but I do honestly wonder. It's like, how do you fail to do something so basic? I just, I don't, I don't understand. Some people have theorized like maybe the priest is tired or maybe they just lost the words. I, I'm sorry, but no, none of that works because at the end of the day, it still tells me they don't know the very basics of 
that particular form is essential to a valid confession. So being tired or I lost the word, so I made something up or that still doesn't ex explain the fact that it seems like they don't really understand what's the bare minimum. So I've always kind of wondered in my mind, like, how could one go through seminary for so long and not know the very basics? I've, I've honestly wondered, but you know what? Not my place to say anything directly to the priest. So whatever, that's more for their superior to address, but I have thought it, but I won't say it directly to them. And I don't recommend that you say in the confessional to the priest, how could you completely fail to do your very basic duties? That That's just, no, it's not the right approach. So again, try to do so charitably, respectfully, in an understanding way, even though it's not excusable, but just in your best way, try to be understanding. And of course, if you contact the individual superior for them to correct the situation and be aware of it, still do sell, do, do that out of charity as well. Don't, don't just go, you know, to one's bishop or one's pastor, if this is maybe an assistant pastor. Um, and, and just start ridiculing the person and saying, how could they mess this up? And just, you know, that that doesn't need to be where this is coming from. It needs to be coming from a place of genuine concern because you just want to make sure that this doesn't happen again to anyone else, including yourself. Because my question is, it's like, okay, if this happened to me, like how many other people has this happened to, right? <laughs> and, and okay, and if you forgot the words with me, you probably are going to forget the words with the next person that goes in. And so, um, yeah, it, it needs to be out of that motivation, that intention, not out of the motivation of let me just bash these people for their terrible performance. And I'm sure you wouldn't want people doing that to you with your job. Don't do it to others, especially, you know, somebody who's serving the church in sacred orders. That's even higher calling. And so, yeah, just just be cognizant of the way in which you present it. Do so out of a spirit and an intention of charity and love, not out of I'm going to go and expose this person and get them in trouble and just go and roast them. And then. no, don't do that. And I've seen people who behave that way. And that's concerning because two wrongs don't make a right. Yes, a priest may be wrong maybe even unintentionally, maybe they're unintentionally omitting the words of absolution. They may be wrong, but that doesn't mean that you have to go and add more problems. It doesn't mean that you have to be wrong as well. So again, relax. God sees the intentions of your heart. He sees that you presented yourself to the church. He sees that you're doing everything that you can to use the sacraments. It's not like you just don't care. Have an intention to either go to confession elsewhere or gently and kindly and lovingly ask the priest to give you the words of absolution. And or later on, gently and kindly mention it to the bishop or if it's a, an assistant priest, assistant pastor, you can mention it to his pastor. And odds are they'll they'll fix the situation. Beyond that, there's nothing else that you can really do. At that point, you have to leave things into the hands of God. If if the pastor or if the bishop doesn't want to correct the issue, that's on them. It's not on you. You've done everything that you can to present the truth, to present, to make the situation known. Um, you know, at that point, if they don't do anything to address it, that's on them. But again, at the end of the day, you've done your part. God sees your intentions. God sees your heart. God sees that you're doing everything that you can. And he is not the kind of God who's going to say, I'm not going to give you mercy because these other people didn't use these particular words. God is able to give grace in an extraordinary way. You don't ever presume upon uh, uh, presume upon God's grace and presume that he does so you you do everything that you can to make use of the sacraments because that's ordinarily where he gives them but if that's unavailable 
trust and rest in the mercy of God. Don't start panicking and freaking out. I know there's a lot of people who start freaking out and thinking, oh, I'm going to hell and what do I do? And relax. God loves you. And you'll be able to correct this issue. You'll be able to go and see somebody else, if not have the priest himself correct the issue. And again, if you've done everything that you can to receive the sacraments and they're somehow unavailable to you, trust and rest in the mercy of God. God is not bound to the sacraments. We're bound to the sacraments. God is not bound to the sacraments. He can forgive you. He can give you mercy even apart from them. All right. So that is my advice. Uh, let's see if there's any questions in the chat. I'd be happy to take some. Uh, let's see. Hmm. I'll get through the chat here. Um, let's see. <laughs> let's see. How often do I go to confession? Um, so it's different for every person and for a person who is struggling with scrupulosity, um, my advice would be go once a month which is what I used to do, but I don't really struggle with scrupulosity anymore. So I tend to go a little bit more often once every other week, generally speaking. That's what I tend to do. Uh, but for somebody who's struggling with scrupulosity, eh, I mean, ultimately speak to your confessor, but just as a general rule, yeah, once every other week, probably too often for you if, if you're dealing with scrupulosity. Fortunately, I'm not dealing with it and haven't for years. Um, let's see. Um, there's a priest I go to who says, I absolve you from your sins. And that's it. Is that valid? Um, well, <laughs> this is where it gets weird. All right. Let's look here through, um, through the canon law made easy has a really good art article on this the code of canon law does not directly address the question but the answer is contained in the church's 1974 right of penance found in the roman missal and by the way again keep in mind we're talking about roman right confessions here i'm not talking about anything in the eastern churches this right is still in force and it tells us what is essential the priest extends his hands or at least his right hand over the head of the penitent and pronounces the formula formulary of absolution in which he says the essential words are i absolve you from your sins in the name of the father son and the holy spirit as he says the final phrase the priest makes the signs of the cross a uh, sign of the cross over the penitent so you're asking he says i absolve you from your sins and that's it and he just stops there um i imagine I imagine this canon lawyer and others would argue that that's um, uh, that is n not the ordinary way to administer it in the right of penance. And I could see some of the canon lawyers arguing that isn't valid. Then again, I could also see some arguing that it, that is valid. So here's the problem. You shouldn't have to wonder and ask these questions. It's really not hard to say these words and to stick to them and to not deviate it's not hard it's like how hard is it to just print out the formula first of all it's easy to memorize it but even if you don't memorize it how hard is it to maybe just print it out and put it right right there the confessional and just read it i i don't understand for the life of me how this even happens <laughs> we shouldn't have to ask these questions like is that still valid kind of i I could see a can of lawyer arguing that's not valid. All right. In those cases, like they're messing up on the form of the sacrament, just go and see a different priest and confess your sins to them. Um, or, uh, Richard, that's a great question here. Can you receive communion if you're not sure? Uh, yeah, look, if, if you're not sure about the validity of, of the sacrament, err on the side of God's grace and mercy. If, if you're not sure, I err on that side. And I don't see anything wrong with that. Now, if you know better and you know, hey, this wasn't valid, just do your best the next opportunity you have to go to a priest and confess those sins and receive absolution. But don't fear that you're somehow going to hell in the meantime because God sees your heart. 
God sees your intention. God sees that you're presenting yourself to the church. Yeah, great question. Um, let's see. Hmm. If I'm not wrong, there are three forms of the right of confession. Do all these essentials apply to all of it? All right. So here's the here's the problem with that line of thinking. Um, I, I've I've seen it argued pretty well that in cases where you have like different churches and thus different rights for these sacraments for it to be valid you have to be using the right that you belong to as a priest like if, you, if you're a priest and you're latin right you can't use maybe a different right and different formula that may be found elsewhere it has to be the one that is used within your own right so I could certainly see somebody arguing that, no, it's not valid because it's not valid for your right. The church gets to determine validity in some of these cases for its own rights. And there could be differences. The church can say, in this right, this is what is valid. In this right, this is what is valid. The church has that authority in some cases. There are some restrictions that the church some things that the church can't change when it comes to the sacraments. But there is some leeway when it comes to some instances of the form of the sacraments. The church does have that authority to determine here's what it is. Uh, Father Brown said, I'd weigh in, but I, I don't want to just repeat whatever Michael Lofton just said or is about to say. No, I want to hear it, Father. Go, go ahead and weigh in. And, and Father Corey, if you're still there too, I'd love to hear your thoughts on these things as well. Uh, so certainly feel free. I, I, definitely would love to hear and please help me understand how how is this even an issue like play devil's advocate for me you're a priest so you know what priests are going through play devil's advocate for me on how does this ever even happen like how how does this situation arise where it's not like an emergency and somebody you know is coming up to you on the street asking for a confession like no one is literally in the confessional how does how does this happen where somebody doesn't know the basics? I I'd love to hear devil's advocate. Um, do Eastern rites uh, understand mortal and venial sins unlike the um, unlike the Eastern Orthodox Church? I don't know if I understand unlike the Eastern. I think I understand what you're asking. I think you're asking do the Eastern Catholic churches have an understanding of mortal and venial sins like the Eastern Orthodox churches? Yes and no. Um, first of all, there is no one view for the Eastern Orthodox, so that's already already a non-starter. <clears throat> um, some Eastern Orthodox are comfortable making a distinction between mortal and venial sins. Others aren't. Um, now, as far as Eastern Catholics, the the very basics of the concept is going to be recognized because number one it's there in the catechism for the universal church which includes the eastern churches and also in the eastern code of canon law the the concept is going to be certainly assumed there um and now you may not necessarily have the use of those terms or an emphasis on them and there could certainly be a different way of addressing these issues um for instance the the question of um assigning penance during the sacrament um but as far as just the basic concept the basic concept is is going to be there um <laughs> isn't the necessary matter and form to confess all mortal sins you're conscious of and the priest has to say absolve you uh, of your sins in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yep, that's what we discussed. Yep, has to be individual, integral, and absolution has to be provided. And we looked at the bare minimum for absolution. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, I think Father has a comment here. Okay, devil's advocate. Sometimes people use euphemisms for their sins. I think I'm absolving something, uh, but it's something completely different. Ballot. I guess I'm not following. Um, 
no I, no that i guess i guess maybe may not have understood my question here's my question devil's advocate how does a priest fail to say the essential words of the formula of absolution that that's what i'm curious about like how does this actually happen again i've heard some say well maybe the priest is tired he's heard a million confessions and just messes up another one is um he forgets the words but it's like in all of those instances the the problem is it seems clear that the priest doesn't understand the bare minimum of what's essential for the sacrament um, so I, I'm not sure the tired or I forgot the words gets one off the hook. Um, maybe if they're tired and they think they said the words, but actually didn't, I could see that. I could see that. Maybe. Yeah. That's, I'm trying to play devil's advocate here. Like how, do, how does this actually happen? Uh, let's see. In my if I was, Father Corey says, in my opinion, most priests who play with the words of absolution or leave them off seem to have a poor understanding of the sacrament and its purpose. They are the priests who often discourage use of it. Yes, yes, that, that's what I'm saying. Like, there usually has to be an underlying lack of understanding for this to happen. Um, it's like they're thinking, well, as long as I say something to that effect it's somehow good enough. Well, that tells me that they don't understand the difference between valid, invalid, matter, form, and they don't know what's essential to a form. And it's like, those are just such basic things. And I just wonder, how does one get through seminary and not know these things? I don't know. What are they teaching in the seminaries is, is kind of the question I have next. Uh, but yeah, but... <sighs> And and I could certainly see what you're saying there. There are they they are the priests who often discourage use of it. Those are the ones who in, are intentionally doing this. In my case, the the priest who invalidated my confession, I don't believe was intentionally doing it. I don't believe he was because number one, I know he he's a good man. Uh, his his heart is in the right place. He's a good guy. Um, I've even heard him use the correct forms of a form of absolution before. So I think his heart's in the right place. He's, he's done it before. I could tell he was starting to fumble over his words. Like he was trying to recall the prayer from memory. And again, English is not his primary language. I could tell he was starting to fumble over it and then forgot and then started making up a prayer. So I think it came from a good place from good intentions and that he felt that that was valid. But what that still tells me is that the priest lacks a very basic understanding of sacramental validity. And again, I'm just trying to figure out how does this ever even happen? I don't know. But God bless him because I know his heart's in the right place and I know he meant well. Um, at least I assume it. I have all reason to believe that. Um Let's see. Father Brown says, you're right. It's pretty easy to get the bare bit of a right. I can understand a little bit more for somebody, again, whose who's native language is in English, you know, especially with like memorizing the prayer. But again, it's like just print the thing out and put it right there in the confessional. But you won't think to print it out and put it in the confessional if you don't believe or know that this is essential. If you have a faulty understanding of the sacrament and think that there isn't such a concept of form and you're not even aware of that you're probably not going to think well let me print this out to make sure that i'm saying it correctly you're just going to go into the confessional and be like oh, i'll just go based on memory and if i forget i'll just make something up uh, <laughs> uh okay let's see what else we got here um no i don't understand how priest spent nearly a decade in seminary and then fails in the sacraments like that yeah well that that's my question too um you know how, how does this happen but you know i'm i'm sure for not non-priests in secular vocations we, we have all kinds of failures too right <laughs> we, <laughs> we as laity have all kinds of failures in our vocations too so it's like yeah it er, everybody Everybody has their weaknesses, I guess. Um, 
let's see. I guess priests probably feel that way about us. Like if we're a cook or something and we completely fail them and they find a roach in our food that we cooked for them or a hair, they're like, how could they do this? You know, the priest is probably like, how could they fail so miserably? <laughs> they're probably thinking the same thing. <laughs> I don't know. Father Brown is, is that something that ever comes to mind when, when, uh, when a layman serves you food with, with a hair in it. <laughs> Uh, let's see. I had a confession where the priest says, I forgive you of your sins. He was a boomer. He was a boomer priest. I so he was concerned with, he was not concerned with the details. Um, yeah. Um, hmm. Did he say, I forgive you of your sins in the name of the father, son, and Holy spirit. I mean, I could see in that case, somebody arguing that that's still valid because absolve and forgive effectively have the same meaning here. Um, but I mean, that, I'm not saying that that's okay, but I, I could certainly see somebody arguing that's still valid. If they say, I forgive you of your sins in the name of the father, son, and Holy Spirit. Um, hmm. Father Corey says that while it's true, there are a significant number of priests who downplay confession. The situation is getting better. That's encouraging. Yeah, it does seem like younger priests and, you know, more younger generations are a whole lot better than, you know, some of the some of the older generations. You know, it does seem like things are getting better. Um <laughs> I've heard of at least one case where the priest accidentally skipped the words of consecration at mass because he turned two pages in the missile. Fortunately, his server pointed it out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> let, let me give you another instance here. Okay. I'm aware of a parish. I'm not going to say what parish it is and name names. That's not the point, but I'm aware of a parish that for years, not one instance, but for years used invalid matter for the Eucharist. Years. So all of those masses sacramentally were invalid. And all those people who donated for masses and mass stipends. Yeah. But anyways, I asked, hey, did they go and re-say all those things? thousands of masses for the people in those mass stipends and the answer was no anyways uh, <laughs> that raises a question what about all those people who went to those masses and did not know it was invalid matter is god just going to damn all those people because of a technicality that the sacrament wasn't confected and they didn't know better it's one thing if you know and you just say, ah, I don't care. I don't care about it. Eh, if it's invalid, it doesn't matter to me. That's that's something else. But what, what about all these people? Thousands of people did not know that it was an invalid mess. Is God just going to damn them? No. No. Maybe they didn't receive sacramental grace. But surely we serve a God who would have given them grace extra sacramentally out of ignorance their intention is proper maybe they didn't sacramentally receive grace but surely they can extra sacramentally be given it and surely we serve a god who would give them grace in such instances um so yeah that that brings up a really interesting scenario there um is it proper to only offer face-to-face -face confession I'm not aware of that being something that can be restricted, but I could certainly be mistaken here. Um, I'm not aware of, of there being an option for priests to say it can only be in this particular way. I, again, I, I could be wrong. That I don't know. Uh, fathers, if y'all can maybe uh, let us know there in the chat, that'd be helpful. Uh, father, is it father about my question about the food says, I try to be patient knowing how often I mess up, <laughs> right? <laughs> I get it. I get it. <laughs> 
sometimes it's just an oversight or error. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could see that. Um, I once had a priest not give absolution, but tell me he said it interiorly in his mind. I don't know if that's actually valid for the um, for the sacrament. I'm pretty I'm pretty sure it has to be said audibly. It doesn't necessarily have to be said in a so audibly and loud that the person hears it. But I'm, I'm pretty sure it has to be said audibly. Um, otherwise, couldn't you also argue that the confection of the sacrament could be inaudible? And that I just I don't I don't know about that one. That doesn't sound right to me. Um, <laughs> I know several priests who miss the memo on not offering confession over the phone or Zoom. Yeah, yeah. You you know I. This is an interesting one. So I'm not aware of any diocese and bishop who has approved of this. And I also am not aware of Rome allowing it um, or approving of it. But one of the questions that can be asked is, could, however, the church in the exercise of the keys um, allow for this under certain conditions? Like, could the church, could, could Rome come out and say, you know, it's up to the discretion of the diocese and bishop to have a priest um, offer um, absolution over a phone call or Zoom meeting. Um, I would theologically argue that's within the authority of the, the church's um, administration of the sacraments. Even though, like right now, I don't think any bishop could do that. I do think that the church itself uh, could eventually allow for that. Now, that's a different question of whether or not it should. Uh, but I'd be interested in hearing y'all's thoughts on that. Where, am I wrong? What, where's the theological error? I'd love to hear it. Um, some have argued, no, it, it, it essentially, by its very nature, would have to be face-to-face. -face. But every argument that I've heard about that is it, is it sufficient. They'll be like, I need to make sure that they're really sufficiently penit uh, you know, penitent. Well, you, you don't even know that when they're right there in front of you behind the screen. You, you don't know that. Um, the way that you assume it is they say the act of contrition. So they could say the act of contrition over a phone or a Zoom call. Again, I'm not saying it can be done validly right now. I'm just saying, like, theoretically, could the church approve of that? Uh, again, curious to hear your thoughts. We're bound by the sacraments. God isn't. Now the situation for the priest who knowingly invalidates the sacrament is a different story. Right. So if like a priest knows he's invalidating uh, a sacrament, it's it, the situation for him is very different because he, he can't just assume, well, God is going to be merciful. No, no. Um, or even a layman who knows that it was invalid. Like if you're a layman and you know it was invalid, like you have that certain certitude. It's just clear the priest uses a Dorito instead of bread for the sacrament or something. Um, like it's obvious. Yeah. The layman can't say, well, God will just forgive me kind of a thing. Well, you certainly God can forgive you. And maybe in the case of like, you're aware that the priest invalidated your confession. I think you can relax. You don't need to feel like I'm going to immediately go to hell unless I find a different priest. I don't think it's that, but I also don't think that you should say, I'm never going to worry about this again and never confess these sins again. Even though I know it was invalid, I'm not going to go to a different priest when I give get the chance and, and confess. That's different because now it's like you know it was invalid and you're deliberately choosing to say, I'm not going to confess it. I don't think one can expect God's grace at that point. Um... Father says, I think priests should offer anonymous uh, behind some kind of screen when possible, but it's not required. Right. But can the priest say, no, it has to be faith, face to face. You can't confess anonymously. I don't think that they they could canonically do that. But I, but I'm I could be mistaken. Um, yeah. Phone, Zoom call confessions are currently not allowed. Yep. Um, but I could see. 
I could see where that actually might be a good thing in rare cases. I'm not saying that that needs to be the ordinary thing. But think about it like this. What if you have somebody who is working in Alaska you know, or where or rather working in Antarctica, you know, some, some extraordinary circumstance and, and they really need to make a confession and it's going to be a long time before that they could, you know, present themselves or something like I could see in those situations, the church saying, yeah, we're going to allow for these cases in, you know, at the discretion of the diocese and Bishop or whatever. I could see that. Um, <laughs> um, I don't think this is a good argument, Teresa. You can't have confessions on Zoom or over phone because confession is private and anyone can hack. Yeah, I don't think that that, that actually works here as far as validity. Or number two, I don't even think it's consistent because some people can eavesdrop and hear your confession even in the confessional. So I'm, I'm not sure about that one. Um... Canon 964 says that the penitent has the right for confession behind a screen, but doesn't seem to indicate anything concerning face to face. Gotcha. Gotcha. Anthony says 1 800 confession. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think it should be like a, a regular thing. <laughs> but it, it is something I think the church will eventually have to really take a hard look at for exceptional circumstances. Um, one time the priest didn't say to make an act of contrition, but it was valid because I had contrition anyways. Well, the act of contrition is not essential. Now that's, that's part of the sacrament, but it's not essential to it in the, in the Roman rite even. So even, even if you don't make an act of contrition, uh, I could see somebody arguing that's illicit. I'd, I'd have to look more into that, but is it valid? Yeah, it's still valid. Now, in the Eastern rites, um, there there isn't necessarily uh, a, a requirement for an act of contrition. Uh, you may not have an act of contrition, and you may not even be given a penance. That doesn't mean that you're not to do a penance, however. Um, everybody should perform penance. Let's see what else we got here. Uh <laughs> I want TLDRs for some confessions. <laughs> Too long didn't read. <laughs> I was wondering about that because because I'm always wondering like what what is going on. I mean, I'll usually get to confession. There's usually like four other people in front of me, and they take forever every single time. And I just wonder like, I know they're not giving a general confession. I know that because they're here every week. <laughs> It's the same people every week, so <laughs> or every other week, you know. And <sighs> what takes so long? Like, I, I don't get it. Is and I, I know the priest isn't giving like really long advice e either. I'll go in and I'll be in there like three minutes from the start to finish, like me, the priest, everything, the whole thing in and out, like three minutes. So I always wonder like these long confessions that I know are not general confessions. I always wonder, it's like, are the penitents in there just giving like a really, really long and detailed confession. And I could completely sympathize if that were the case with the priest. I could only imagine being a priest listening to a person give this like, over the top really long confession instead of getting to the point <laughs> and, and i imagine as a priest you don't want to say like get to the point cut to the ch like i imagine you don't want to say that so you have to literally sit there and listen to them talk about everything that led up to the circumstance of the confession though <laughs> and everything that led up to the circumstance of the sin even though none of it's you know actually relevant they'll tell you the whole life story of how they got to the point that they committed that act <laughs> like this, this is what's going on in my mind <laughs> like what exactly is happening in there i'm all, I always i'm always wondering i'd love to hear your thoughts from the other side of the confessional i i imagine that's probably what's going on some person is saying okay well and what happened was i let my dog <laughs> I let my dog Poodles out early and, and Poodles started chasing the cat. And then Poodles 
ate a mouse and the mouse wasn't entirely dead. And so I had to scoop it up and throw it away. Or I went to the vet and while I was at the vet, I saw a person I didn't like. And I thought to my thought to myself, I can't stand that person. And so I want to confess the sin of bitterness and resentment against this person. <laughs> it's like, I, I wonder, is, is that what's going on? They're like telling you this really long story that led up to the sin. It's probably a venial sin. <laughs> I, I got you here in the chat. So I, I'd love to hear. I know you can't tell me specifics. I know you I can't break the seal confession, but you can tell me generally if what I just described is true. <laughs> <laughs> the other day when I was gardening, my neighbor's cousin's kids did. Father Corey says, right. <laughs> they tell you the whole life story behind it all. And again, I, I feel for you at that point as a priest. I feel for you. Because I imagine you don't want to say, like, what you're saying is taking forever get to the point. Like, you don't want to hurt and wound the person who would feel like at that point, oh, gosh. I never want to go to confession again. You know, I'm so embarrassed or, you know, this priest is mean to me. Like, I know you don't want to wound the person. So you probably just have to bite your tongue and listen to this really long confession. And you come away thinking that should have taken one minute to confess. But instead, it took 20. Um, <laughs> there's a reason why the church encourages number and kind for confessing. Right. <laughs> uh, Father also says here, let's see. A lot of times people explain why uh, what they did wasn't as bad as it sounds, which takes time. Yeah, I, I imagine that that's also happening. Like they're trying to mitigate it, which is entirely irrelevant, right? It's like whether it's mitigated and venial doesn't really matter as far as the sacrament itself. So it's like you're already here. Even if it's all venial, you're getting absolution anyway. So it really doesn't matter don't try to downgrade your sin. <laughs> it's not going to impact anything anyway. So you're just wasting time. <laughs> the priest probably doesn't even know who you are anyway. And he's not going to remember after the, the confession. So it's all irrelevant. Um, <clears throat> Hypothetically, if a minister of a sacrament were to maliciously and mentally attempt to withhold proper intention from ma maintaining proper sacrament form with the sacrament be valid. This is where there's a problem in what you understand to be intention. Um, intention would be something that is externalized, not something that is like necessarily in, internal. Could you imagine if that were the case, how many ordinations may be invalid? Like if the bishop didn't intend to actually ordain the person, but he uses valid matter and valid form in the proper setting. It's not like it's in a movie or something. So all of the external realm, the intention is there, but he withholds the intention interiorly. Now that person actually isn't ordained. And so all of his masses and confessions are invalid. And, and if he becomes a bishop one day, well, he, he's not really, you know. And so that's not what intention actually is, in my understanding. I've actually seen the intention is, is something that is more external. Um, but I'm certainly willing to hear if I'm in error on that, but all evidence that I've seen would indicate that in intention isn't that kind of like an internal intention. Again, otherwise you could never, ever know that any sacrament is valid ever, ever, no sacrament ever. <laughs> it, could you imagine the chaos that that would lead to? I don't, I don't believe that's correct. Um, let's see. Father says, yeah, um, minimize their sins or justify them. Yeah. It's like, I figured that's what's taking so long. I've always wondered. <laughs> uh, I wish priests did confession before every mass. It would make it easier for me to get to the sacrament. Some, some priests do. Some priests do. Um, let's see. Confessions available before mass should be mandated when possible. Um, I think we'll probably need more priests for that to happen. I don't know. A lot of them seem pretty 
stretched pretty thin already. So I, I don't see that happening anytime soon. Uh, especially if you're a priest who has like three parishes that you're dealing with. Like, that's, that's not going to happen. Um, so if a priest plays a priestly role in a movie and uses right form, it, it, is, is it invalid because of the setting? See, that's what I would argue is, is the intention is clearly not there because externally it's a movie setup. It's, it's obvious that the intention is not um, to confect the sacrament. So I, I would argue, no, that that would not be valid intention, proper intention. <clears throat> uh, but again, if you see anything authoritative that corrects what I just say, please let me know. But I've never seen any author anything authoritative that would correct what I just said. And it seems like what I, what I just said is, is in fact the case, because the opposite would be you could never, ever know that any sacrament is valid ever ever he, baptisms doesn't matter you could never know um and that just completely at that point destroys the entire purpose of having sacraments as an objectively identifiable thing so that that's the whole purpose um let's see how often to give general confession I, i'm not understanding your question there are some exceptional circumstances when general confession is is to be administered but that's not often it's it's exceptional um pretty sure we can maybe do a video on it but again it's it's general um now you're you're not referring to more your general confessions that takes place at mass that is more for venial sins i don't think you're referring to that i think you're talking about like general confession where um you have the sacrament being administered to a number of people all at the same time that's going to be again gen that's going to be an exceptional situation ordinarily it has to be individual confession um but i've heard i've heard a you know of some abuses with that before i've i've also heard of some abuses like right before it's never happened to me but i've heard of uh some priests saying like right before mass um you know somebody wants to confess to them and there's like not enough time so they just go ahead and absolve the person and they didn't even say what their sins were yet that's that's not valid uh, because they, they haven't actually said what their sins are. That's an essential component. Just throwing that out there. Uh, let's see. Okay. Um, general confession of all you did before in your life. Oh, that's what you're talking about. Okay. I understand now. Gotcha. 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 Like, how often are you as a layman to give a general confession? This, this is, I mean, it's going to depend on a person. First of all, you're going to give that general confession with your, your first confession post-baptism. So, like, if you're a Protestant, you've been baptized, but you've committed a bunch of sins before your reception into the Catholic Church, you're going to give a general confession. If you're a non-Catholic and you've never been baptized, you're going to be baptized, and that's going to take care of your sins um now in the case however of somebody who post reception into the catholic church wants to do a general confession that's ultimately going to be up to you but here's my advice use some discernment there because here here's where you could end up that could end up being harmful to you again talk more to your confessor who knows your situation but just generally speaking here uh, sometimes there could be a scrupulous tendency to give a general confession for sins that have already been forgiven. Um, it could actually be harmful for the person to then give a general confession if they're struggling with scrupulosity. Because what's going to happen is twofold. Number one, you'll be tempted to do that constantly. 
you know, reconfess things that have already been forgiven. Um, and then number two, you may even then feel that you did something to invalidate your general confession. And so now you go to another priest to give another general confession because you feel like your previous one, you invalidated somehow. So you, now you got to give another one. So now you're giving multiple general confessions, you know, within a span of the same day or a few days or whatever. I, you can see how that could that's that's feeding into the scrupulosity and making it worse that's not helping things that's making it worse that's feeding the scrupulosity monster as i call it it gets bigger and bigger and bigger the more you feed it so you want to starve it so it dies out it doesn't get bigger um for a person who's not struggling with scrupulosity they may find it very beneficial to confess things that they've already confessed in a general confession that's helpful if you're not struggling with scrupulosity that's a good thing it's a good thing. So again, maybe talk to your confessor to kind of find out what's best for you because it's going to be different for different people. For people struggling with scrupulosity, I do not recommend that you repeat a general confession or give one post reception to the church while you're struggling with scrupulosity. But for, and again, that's generally speaking, but for somebody who isn't, there's nothing inherently wrong with that. It could actually be helpful. So, um, Let's see. Um, let's see. How can I have a right for a screen if they don't provide it? Isn't it kind of obvious who confess if I request for a screen first? Um, let, let me look at Canon 964. Let's look at it. And I don't know if there have been any um, updates or anything else from the congregation that modifies things or makes exceptions and so i i'm certainly not an expert here let's see the proper place to hear sacramental confessions is a church or oratory the confession of bishops is to establish norms regarding the confessional so conference of bishops so we'd have to see what the conference of bishops in your territory uh has as far as norms it is to take care, however, that there are always, are always confessionals with a fixed grate between the penitent and the confessor in an open place so that the faithful who wish uh, to can use them freely. Confessions are not to be heard outside of confessional without a just cause. So they can be done, but with a just cause. Um, ordinarily, they would have to be in a church oratory. oratory and this is saying that um, the conference of bishops should take into account that they should always have a confessional with a fixed grade. But I don't know if there's again been any updates to that or something that gives the conference of bishops an exception from just on the surface of it. It doesn't look like it. It seems like they're supposed to give you that option, but you know, I'd have to look more into it. Uh, let's see. People say only to confess to God, uh, but we should confess both to God and the priest, as St. James was saying. Well, look, um, you obviously can't get the confession immediately, right? In most cases, obviously. So, of course, confess immediately to God. Confess immediately to God every day, every hour of every day. Make a direct confession to God. That's, of course, of course. Never say, I'm not going to confess my sin until I go to confession that's foolish confess your sins immediately immediately um confess them daily confess them hourly whatever just as often as possible um if you say the jesus prayer all the time you that's what you're doing lord jesus christ son of god have mercy on me a sinner you're confessing your sin non-stop at that point um so certainly do that however don't neglect the sacrament of confession don't go to that extreme either say you know what i'm gonna go and it's gonna look different for different people some people a lot of people in the early church may have gone to confession once in a lifetime so don't get too scrupulous with this um it's gonna look different on how frequent it's gonna be for different people but go as often as it is best for your soul again speak to a good confessor here they can kind of guide you go as often as is best for your soul and your situation and in the meantime confess directly to god do both it's a both and not a not a lord um 
Let's see. Well, here's a good question that Kyle asked, Father, and he answers. If you're at liberty, say, how effective is the screen? If you know the person well, I assume you know exactly who is on the other side of the screen. Uh, it helps when I'm only kind of uh, acquainted with a penitent. It also helps if you can fake a foreign accent. <laughs> Yeah, that that's a tough thing, I imagine, for a priest because, like, as a priest, you you probably recognize some people, and how do you not keep that in the back of your mind when you see them again? Like, I bet I imagine that's a struggle. Now, I know pr some priests will be like, I completely forget as soon as they leave the confessional, but I imagine there's some cases where it's like you re you remember that person's particular sin, and I imagine it's hard to not. I imagine it's hard to forget that and you do everything you can to not allow it to impact you, but it's like, it's in the back of your mind. I, I imagine that's a struggle. Um, I, I certainly don't envy you. Uh, the Jesus prayer and prayers like Jesus, I trust in you help to eliminate scrupulosity in the conscience. Yeah, they, they can certainly help. Certainly help. Absolutely. Um, but I, I highly recommend uh, another a number of other things. To summarize them all, get Father Thomas Santa's book, Understanding Scrupulosity. Best thing out there on the scrupulosity I've seen to date. Um, I've been wanting to get in, get him on the show. Uh, I don't think I've um, ever been able to touch base with him, though. So, to my recollection, I've never been able to speak to him directly, but um, I'd love to get him on. Uh, let's see if you have a specific foreign accent, no help. Then the hopeful says that's funny. Uh, if the confession must take place in a confessional, unless there is a just cause, does this make regular confession opportunities at Catholic schools potentially problematic? What causes would be cited? Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I imagine there's something that the conference of bishops has as far as guidelines in those cases. Uh, Father Brown says it's a grace. I think I think to quickly forget it also helps when you realize everyone has embarrassing sins, no matter. Uh, so no reason to remember them. Yeah, every single individual does. There, like, and and you would know that very well as as somebody who hears people's confessions. You get to hear that they're probably all very similar, and everybody is embarrassed, and everybody has those things, and so yeah. It, it, you know, don't 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 think if if you're a Catholic, like don't think that you're somehow exceptional in your sins. You're you're really not. You're really not. Every everybody, everybody has things that they've done that they're embarrassed um, and wish wasn't part of their lives. You know, they were part of their past. That's that's everybody. Um, would a Zoom confession be valid, though illicit? To my knowledge, it's neither illicit nor valid at this time. But we did have a discussion earlier on could the church um, allow for its validity. I argue, yes, it could. However, it currently hasn't. Um, confession really helps to grow in the virtues of humility and mortification. Yes, yes. For somebody who is not scrupulous, that's very helpful. For somebody who's scrupulous, it could actually be a torture chamber and, and not helpful to a person um, to go to use it as a point to grow in virtue. Um, not that the scrupulous person doesn't need to go to confession. They do, but not extra is what I'm saying. Um, like for a person who's not scrupulous and, and struggling with scrupulosity, Going to confession frequently, like once a week, could actually be helpful. That could build virtue, and it could be advisable for them. But somebody scrupulous going once a week could actually be very harmful in in some cases. Um, maybe once a month or once every three months. It just depends on that person's circumstance. A good good confessor will kind of guide them and tell them how often. But once a week could actually be harmful for them because. Um, for for some people who are struggling with scrupulosity, um, they could really, really get in a very bad position where they even think that they need to go more frequently than that. Um, all, all kinds of problems can result from here. In fact, I'll probably just do a show pretty soon on scrupulosity. 
uh, and talk about some of these things and how to avoid them. But yeah, it could actually be very harmful for them to go off and just, it depends on their situation. So what you're saying is true for some and in other circumstances, not so much. Um, let's see. <clears throat> Hmm. <laughs> father said i remember it took about three months into my priesthood before i checked off the likes box for hearing everything yeah yeah i could see that i could certainly see that um Teresa says my priest told me i'm getting better at confession <laughs> that's great that's great yeah <laughs> we, we all have room for improvement yeah i've, I've had to certainly work on some things i've Again, as a person who used to struggle with scrupulosity, I, I was a nightmare to deal with. So, <laughs> uh, I can only imagine. Let's see. Sort of on topic is matter and form the only thing needed for the validity of a sacrament? Um, well, in, in, intention, but we discussed what intention meant earlier as well. Um, Always good to know that there's not a single creative sinner among us, Kyle says. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, here's a good question for Father. Do you ever have to tell people that's weird but technically not a sin? Father says it's kind of difficult because doing something you think is a sin is probably a sin. <laughs> I could certainly see that. <clears throat> I can certainly see that. Uh, let's see. But I, I feel bad for, again, priests who have to listen to these long-winded confessions. And at the end of the day, it's like every one of those was probably venial <laughs> at best. <laughs> it's, it's just like, why? Why? I imagine that could be frustrating. <laughs> Anyways, I think that's going to do it. We're at about an hour 15. We'll go ahead and end it there. And uh, appreciate y'all watching. Hope y'all enjoyed it. If so, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Of course, check me out, patreon.com forward slash reason and theology if you want to support what I'm doing. And hey, if you want to see a video on scrupulosity, let me know in the comment section. I could probably make that happen pretty soon. So, all right, that's going to do it. We'll see you later. God bless. Are you confused about how Catholic teaching authority works? With encyclicals, papal bulls, councils, and many other things, it's easy to get confused on what is authoritative and what is not. Fortunately, at MaximusInstitute.com, I have prepared a course explaining the magisterium from A to Z. Visit the website and check out the course Understanding the Magisterium for more information. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button. See you next time. God bless.